Welcome to the Nothing Much Just Chillin' Show with your hosts Emma and Julio. Nothing Much Just Chillin' Show. Nothing Much Just a Chillin'. Welcome back to NMJC or welcome if you're new here. I'm Emma and this is my podcast called Nothing Much Just Chillin' where I chill <laughs> and I talk about whatever I want to talk about that week. So if you like this podcast after you listen to it. If you're like, I want to chill with her every week, please make sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow the podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, rate, review, all that stuff, comment on YouTube. And yeah, thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Let's get started. (laughs) All right. First off, I'm in a new location, new filming spot today in my big, beautiful secondhand chair that we got from the Rose Bowl Flea. I think it was one of the first things we got for the apartment, actually, but it's the most comfy chair in the world. Like anybody who comes over to our apartment, we're like, you have to sit in this chair. Like you could fall asleep in this chair. And actually, somebody did. We <laughs> There was two of these. So there's like the chair and then like the ottoman. And there was two sets of these. So somebody was sitting in one of them and they were sleeping I didn't I didn't know that they were sleeping because they had their sunglasses on but I went up to her and I was like excuse me how much does this chair cost and she like woke up and she was like oh I I don't know I just I just fell asleep here I was like oh well that's that's a great review (laughs) if you can just fall asleep here like it must be so comfy you're at the Rose Bowl flea like it was a hot day like so much was going on like (laughs) you just fell asleep in this chair like it's got to be comfy so yeah we we sat in it and we're like okay yeah we're gonna get it my my little my little vegan heart was a was a little hurt at first I was a little bit like "Mm, I don't know but then I got over it because it's secondhand. Also, these are not real Uggs. No one come for me. <laughs> they are they are fake. Groundwork Coffee, after I had that like viral video about the Groundwork Burrito, they sent me a package with coffee and tea and one of the teas they gave me was their chai. And I brewed it for the first time yesterday. So I made myself a homemade iced chai latte. And it's so good. Okay, so I want to address something from the last episode with Julio in our little shit Julio says section when we brought up that he said open a can of whoop ass and he was like, it's a thing, it's a thing. And I was like, no, it's not. I was wrong. <laughs> I, I was, I hold my hands up. I was wrong. Julio was right and I was wrong. And that doesn't happen very often. So I'll let him have this. <laughs> but yesterday I put on my Instagram story, like, has anybody heard this phrase? And almost everyone there was like six people that said no but like so many people (laughs) that said yes of course I've heard that and then people even dming me like yeah rocky like yeah like whatever they like knew the the reference too and I was just like oh I'm stupid I just didn't I just didn't know and I I I feel like I'm gaslighting myself now because I'm like, I think I have heard it before. Like I definitely have heard open up a can of whoop ass before in my life. Like I have, I have heard that before, but I'm also like, am I just gaslighting myself into thinking now? Cause now I've heard it so many times and so many people have said like, yeah, of course. But I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's the thing. But when I first heard him say it, I was like, I've never heard that in my life, but now thinking about it, I'm like, maybe I have. I just don't think that phrase was very prevalent in my life compared to Julio's. So yeah, I either forgot that I, I had heard it before or I've never heard it, but but it's but it's fine. It was funny. I'm, I totally, I, th- I really thought everybody was going to be on my side on that one. And I just, I got humbled real fast. <laughs> So Julio and I saw a movie this weekend, which is one of our favorite things to do, our two favorite things to do. See movies. That's why we have the AMC A-list Stubbs membership. And then see comedy shows. And we have I'm going to talk about both today <laughs> because we went to see a movie and a comedy show recently. So we saw Spider-Verse, the new Into the Spider-Verse animated movie with uh, Miles Morales. And I 
love these movies. First off, I don't think I said in the last, last episode with Julio, but I was talking about how I was on Sony's lot for a screening for a film. And it was th- that movie. It was the new Into the Spider-Verse movie. And that is when I made eye contact and smiled at Jake Johnson and it made my whole entire life. So I was just reminiscing on that moment. <laughs> but but yeah, it, so he's in the movie. He's great in it. I mean, it's just, I love this Miles Morales universe created with Spider-Man. Like I'm not really into Marvel, but I do feel like Spider-Man is my favorite out of all the superheroes and and Marvel movies like Spider the Spider-Man movies are definitely like always my favorite. I worked on the first Tom Holland Spider-Man. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> yeah, I worked on the first Spider-Man with Tom Holland. No, I didn't. I worked for a company that was working on it basically. So no, I I did nothing, but give the the editor the color editor of the film snacks and food and water and jokes so you could say I had a good hand in making that movie I did I I had a really good relationship actually now that I think about it with the with the color colorist for that movie because Marvel would come in or like Marvel CEOs and, you know, big people, they would come in and they would just like rip him apart. Like they would watch the edit that he did, watch his work, and then like have just really like demanding requests and things that like he didn't see fit for working for it. I don't know. Like there was a lot of, like they weren't getting along. Like it was a lot of back and forth and a lot of like redoing stuff. So I think he was getting a a little bit frustrated. So I just tried to keep his morale high and I would just, yeah, I would just try to make him laugh as much as I could. But that movie was amazing. So I think I did my job. (laughs) Anyways, before I get a huge head about this, so I I worked that screening and yeah, it was just like handing out snacks. So I wasn't doing anything crazy. Like I wasn't working on the movie. Like it, it was already done. I was just giving snacks to the people who were the first like audience screening and we're doing like a survey about it and stuff like that so it wasn't that big of a deal but it was a very very it was a good movie and I'm excited for the next one I'm excited for more of these like honestly these animated Miles Morales universe Spider-Man they're my favorite they're my favorite Marvel movies ever so we still have been going to soccer every week we have soccer on Monday nights Side note, Selena Gomez posted a TikTok of her at the field where we play soccer, not on the same night, but it was another night and she was like yelling, like kind of cat calling like one of the soccer players. Like she was really funny. She was like, what'd she say? She was like, I, I love you. I'm high maintenance, but I'm whatever, whatever the fuck she says. You know what I'm talking about. If you saw the TikTok, it was really funny. But I was like, oh, my God, why wasn't I not there that night that she was there? (laughs) But it's a beautiful field. I really love playing soccer there. But yeah, soccer is not going so well because our our team (laughs) just keeps on losing. I mean, Julio and I, we're like just starting to like get back into like playing and we need to practice more because I just, yeah, I, I don't feel that comfortable with the ball anymore for some reason for some reason I just took years off of playing (laughs) soccer so yeah getting back into it is kind of difficult but it's kind of funny because every week it just feels like a Ted Lasso episode I don't know if you guys watch Ted Lasso but Julio and I have been obsessed with it lately and you know, it's all about like believe and like even if they're losing like Ted Lasso played by Jason Sudeikis, he's just always so positive and they're always like they're still smiling and having a good time. And like, I don't know, they're just it's a very positive show. And and I'm just not a very competitive person. I think that's what I lack in the sportsmanship and in, in my ability to play sports. I'm just not competitive. Like I'm all there to like have a good time, have a good workout meet some people and like I just (laughs) don't care that much about winning which is bad though because I need to care more I need to I need to put in more work because 
I, I don't want to let other people down. But actually the last soccer game that we had, it was like at 8.15 on Monday. And then Julio and I bought tickets earlier that day to a show at the comedy store at 10.30. <laughs> and oh my God, that was like, that was crazy. Like we raced home, took a quick shower, got dressed. It didn't put on any makeup and we just we just went to the late night Monday show at the comedy store. We decided to go earlier that day. We were <laughs> we walked to GBB, Good Boy Bob, which is one of our favorite coffee shops. And we were sitting there and we were looking at our emails and like noticing that Marcelo Hernandez was on some some bills. We're like, oh, he must be doing like some shows. And then Julio found a late show for that night that would be after our soccer game that he was on. And also Bill Burr was on, Eric Eric Griffin, um, Annie Letterman. So we were just like, we have to do it <laughs> because we really wanted to see Marcelo Hernandez. He was honestly great, but he was the last one to go on that night. So we stayed till the very end. Like I actually had to leave. <laughs> I actually had to leave the comedy store to go put more meter in, uh, put more meter, <laughs> to put more money in our parking meter and thankfully, that it wasn't a problem for the security there. I was like, hey, like, can I just leave, put money in my meter and come back? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> people that work at com comedy clubs are like the coolest people. Like they're so nice and like funny. And yeah. So, yeah, he was last, but he was so good. I'm, I'm glad that we stayed for the end for him. Like I honestly wasn't even that tired during it because I think it was just like the adrenaline rush of like playing soccer and then coming home really quick showering and and going but yeah we got home at like like 2 30 past 2 30 that night went to bed at like three so anyways I wanted to talk about bad comedy <laughs> for a second not that I'm a comedian in any sense okay I'm not a comedian but I do go to a lot of comedy shows and just like as a per as a citizen of the world today, I feel like there's something that I want to talk about when it comes to comedy. There are a lot of comedians and people in the world who say things like, you just can't say anything anymore. You know, when I said that, you're definitely thinking of somebody that you know, whether it be someone you're related to or friends with or a comedian that you've that you've seen live or they're special on tv right like they 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 have this sort of opinion that comedy is going downhill or society is going downhill because liberals are snowflakes and you can't say anything and you can't offend anyone and whatever you just get canceled I think to an extent, <laughs> I think there is some truth to that, but I would argue <laughs> talking so much about not being able to talk about things is not funny. It's actually annoying <laughs> to spend money, buy tickets to a comedy club or sit down for an hour and stream a comedy special for an hour of your life, spend an hour of your life watching a comedy special just to have a comedian complain about how they can't talk about anything anymore. I think that you can talk about anything. I mean, the fucking 9-11 jokes that Ashley Gavin does in her special are genius go watch it if you have not if you have not watched ashley gavin's special turn this off <laughs> what are you doing turn this off go watch her special or no stay till the end please we're friends we're friends we're catching up after this please watch her special on youtube she is m my favorite she's one of my favorite comedians right now if not my favorite so so why I bring this up is because at the comedy store Monday night, Bill Burr and Eric Griffin were right at like Bill Burr went first and then Eric Griffin went after. If you don't know Eric Griffin, he's from he was on Workaholics and some other shows, I think. But yeah, we've seen him a couple times. And I think 
always after we see him, Julio and I usually have the same thought of like, "Mm, he's not that good. (laughs) He's not that funny. And his set that night was, was no different. He was just, he had this whole bit about the letters and the LGBTQIA, whatever. I had this whole bit and it was just, it was not fun. First off, he started off being like, yeah, if you even say the word trans, like somebody just comes down and is like, canceled, canceled. It's like, you can talk about trans people. You can make jokes about trans people, but they have to be funny. You can't just like walk around the stage be like, you can't say anything about trans people. You can't say anything about gay people. You can't say anything because then you're homophobic. But it's like, oh, well, I, there wasn't any joke in there. There wasn't, there was zero jokes in what you just said. So maybe actually think of a joke about them that's actually funny. And then maybe people will laugh. Maybe people won't be like, oh my God, you can't say that, you know? But also, comedy aside, just in society, right? When we talk about like, oh, people are so sensitive. Oh, people are being too progressive or like liberals want everyone to be included. And yeah, like there are some annoying things about woke culture. I hate even saying that, but like inclusivity culture, there are some things because there's always the what about people, you know? What about people with no arms? Why are, you, why are you talking about writing? What if people don't have arms? You know, like it's just the most ridiculous. It just doesn't make sense to be like that woke or like inclusionary all, all the time, like with every single thing you say and like in every conversation. And and yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to deal with people being like, what about this? Or, oh, well, that's offending this people. Yeah, it's hard. I get, I get it. But also... <laughs> There are a lot of comedians and a lot of people in the world who always talk about how the far right and the far left are more alike than they are different and how we all want the same thing. And I think that's actual bullshit. (laughs) Like I think that's bullshit, honestly, because if you take one side, it's all against things right like against foreigners against asian people against black people against gay people against women you know and the other side is just speaking up for those who have been oppressed or looked down on or have felt the effects of racism and homophobia in this country you know or anywhere in the world right like those, the, the people, the, the liberals, <laughs> they're not against anything other than hate and bigotry. And I think that there's a very big difference there to be like against people existing and then against people not letting others exist. It's not the same thing. So when you are constantly making your set and jokes and it wasn't just eric griffin like bill burr too when you're constantly on this high horse of like i can't say anything i can't do anything anymore without offending someone you're you're a comedian like make a good joke about it and be be done but yeah they just it's hard to explain if you because you guys weren't there at the comedy show with me but their jokes were just not funny it's just not funny like the, Bill Burr actually had such great jokes about like being a dad like I love that love that content um I think he should do more of that lean into that but if you're if if all you're doing is like commentary about things that you don't really know that well it's not it's not hitting it's not gonna hit it's not funny it's just annoying Because people don't go to a comedy club to be reminded of the bigotry and hate and all the awful things going on in this country and the world. They go to have their their mind shut off and just be able to relax and laugh. They're never going to hear this, but PSA, PSA to all comedians, stop. Just, Just make jokes. Just make jokes funny again, you know? we all know like Dave Chappelle, like how he talks about, how he talks about trans people and it's just like, stop talking about it. 
like there are other there's so many things in this world that are funny i just don't think that needs to be your material especially if you aren't trans yourself like you know people always say like write what you know and i feel like a gay person making fun of gay people or the gay community or a lesbian comedian making fun of like the lesbian community and being lesbian and it hits so much more and even veganism like if a vegan comedian is making fun of veganism like it just it's just so much better it, it, because they know it so well and it, and it's just endearing this like part this humility that they exu- exude dur- during it because they know it really well and they can they ju- it just has that personal touch Whereas somebody on the outside who is already like coming from this closed minded view and not with a not with like love and and respect and un- understanding or the want to understand, it's just it comes off as like why are why are you even talking about this? Like it actually does not affect you in any way. So so little work life update, guys. I was working as a temp for this fashion company for a little bit there. I I agreed to do two weeks and it was just like a front desk position, receptionist position. So they asked me to extend my assignment. And at first I said no, but then they were able to raise my rate. And then I was like, okay, yeah, yes. But I should have just said no because it was it's a full time it was a full-time uh, gig. It was like 8.30 to 5.30. But yeah, it was chill. I liked it. But then I, during those two weeks, I was like, oh, well, I can't do it this all the time because I I have my clients. Like I have to, I have like weekly things that I need to do for my clients. Like there's no way that I can have a full-time job now that I also have these weekly clients. Like it just became a lot or it just would become a lot. And so yeah, I said no at first and they raised my rate and then I was like, okay, fine. So I went back for two more weeks and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like this is getting, I I, I just don't have time to like physically be somewhere <laughs> for that long of a time, for that, for every day, for that long of a time, you know? And it just got me thinking like the day after Memorial Day weekend, you know, that Julio and I spent in Boston and we were so busy and like, we were just tired and And yeah, it was just, it was a long weekend and a lot of travel for like a very short amount of time. So when I went back that Tuesday morning, I, I put on my Instagram story, like a selfie of me on the way to work. Julio was driving, obviously. And I was like, why the fuck did women have to fight for our right to work? And I got so many likes. (laughs) on that story and so many responses to that story that I I feel I mean first off I see on TikTok all the time right the younger generation Gen Z it's everybody on TikTok even like younger millennials like me like everyone on TikTok is on the same page I feel like with this like nobody wants to work like why are we being forced to work like capitalism sucks like I very much relate to like that type of mindset but I feel like on Instagram that hasn't come there yet like everyone's still like I don't know just pretending that like we like capitalism and that we like having jobs I guess I don't know just because of how people how many people reacted to that story of mine and how they reacted I was like oh whoa like feels to me like nobody else has like heard this joke before but like I've seen this joke so many times on TikTok and like different facets right like whether it just be like women talking about like why why who did that who made this decision that we should work (laughs) who gave us the right to work like I just want to just want to vibe or just people feeling like burnt out from like not being able to live their life, not being able to take like vacation time whenever they want to, not being able to like live a full life because they're just stuck behind a desk 40 hours a week or stuck behind their computer for 40 hours a week if they work from home or a hybrid of that or whatever. There's just like, there's so much comfort in having a job and a career, right? Like money and stuff, but it's like money isn't everything, right? Or at least I don't see it as everything. Like I see relationships and friendships and family my relationships with my family and and um, my passions and 
creativity. Like I see that that's the most important thing. I mean, the number one most important thing to me is like Julio, like love in my life. You know, that's that's the most important thing to me. But for so many people, it's their career. And I totally get that. Like everybody is an individual, like everyone has different priorities. But I feel like because we're all under this umbrella of capitalism, specifically in the United States, it's hard when you're like me and like every fucking person I see on my for you page who is like, I don't want to do this. Like I don't want to work. I don't want to work for someone else. I don't even want to work for myself. Like I want I want to just live my life. And it's and it's hard because that's just not how the world works it reminds me of that song by the smiths when where the lyric is like i was looking for a job and then i found a job and heaven knows i'm miserable now it's like you get a job you work all, all your life like schooling you do all the schooling all your life to be able to have a career and get a job and then once you get a job you're like oh shit like this kind of su- this is it this kind of sucks and like even being able to like take off time for work like it makes me really sad that like nobody in my family can like take off work to like either hang out with me or like come visit me it it really it really makes me upset because it shouldn't life shouldn't be like that you should be able to do what you want and you should be able to see the people that you want to see whenever you want to see them and be able to take like a reasonable amount of time off like Julio's job is amazing because he has flexible time off but it's still not like he still has to like get it approved I don't know I don't know if he has to get it approved but whatever like (laughs) I guess I just wish I was like a Nepo baby (laughs) I could just like travel and and Nepo babies I'm very jealous I'm a very jealous person And I'm very jealous of Nepo babies because I, I wish I could just be, all I want to do is just be a woman. I just want to be a woman. I just want to, want to have cute lunches in the park and at the beach. I want to, I want to do my makeup and pick out cute outfits and clean and cook and read and work out and go on long walks and be able to do whatever creative thing I want and be able to do photo and video stuff creatively just for fun with my friends and with Julio and I just that Instagram story like I I was like I was was trying to be funny like I'm glad that everybody found it so funny but it's also like sad that we all are like oh my god haha, like so true it's like oh, but all jokes aside that's how it should be it 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 sh- we shouldn't humans weren't meant (laughs) no one was meant. it reminds me of like it reminds me of that era of videographers like jay alvarez and those kinds of people where they would like make these videos and they were like yeah i'm not i'm not meant for a nine to five like i'm not meant to sit behind a desk i'm meant to go travel and explore and be wild and young and free and like do all these like adrenaline (laughs) pumping activities and while those videos and those creators are like you know cool and like their stuff looks so like you know it's meant to make you feel like like I want to do that like I want to be that way like I want to work hard so that I I can just travel and fuck around or whatever like them saying like oh I'm not meant for the normal kind of life I don't think anybody is (laughs) I mean unless you're just like a boring person with like no hope or aspirations or like ounce of love in your body (laughs) or want to like be outside in nature and and be creative and stuff like unless like you know to each their own like if you really love sitting behind a desk all day or working 40 50 60 70 80 hours a week for a company that doesn't give a fuck about you like that sure like do it like that's really I mean it's great for you because that is like how society is set up right now to be able to even survive but not even because here's the thing I saw this TikTok today that was talking about how the Great Depression like during the Great Depression the med- the average salary of one person was a little under 5k it was like 4800 
And that is seen as like the worst economic time in American history, right? But right now, the economy is so bad, inflation is so bad that the equivalent the equivalent salary to that in 1930 where the, when the Great Depression was the equivalent from 4800 to now in 2023 that that would be 88k for one person 88k what that median salary during the during the Great Depression would be now but you know what the actual <laughs> median salary for Americans is it's like 30 something K and that's ridiculous and we're just we're just supposed to keep on living keep on trucking along keep on trying to live paycheck to paycheck and oh wow sorry I really brought the vibes down with this last topic but I (laughs) but I I I really I want you guys to know that if you have a nine to five right now And you are either a a finding little moments of joy in it. If you love your job, if you love that you can just come home and chill and relax and you can have your nighttime routine and morning routine and you just you have your whole life set up where you like what you do and you aren't being like monotonous or maybe sometimes you like that monotony or you I don't know if you're just like enjoying your job as a nine to five like that's amazing. Like, that's so amazing. Good for you. Like, I'm very, very happy for you. (laughs) And then, and then B, if you have a nine to five, but you are also working like a side hustle creatively to eventually get out of that nine to five and be able to work for yourself or work in a more creative field. Like I applaud you because it takes a lot and it took a lot for me. It takes a lot for me when I have these temp jobs that are that are nine to five or, or that are all day, like eight thirty to five thirty. It takes a lot for me to wake up super early and do work before, and then when I come home, do more work on my on my creative stuff because I I just get burnt out. Like I just because I'm not taking care of myself. Like that's so many hours that you're working for other people and and then also trying to like do your own stuff on the side or have my other clients right like if you're if you're simultaneously having a nine to five to be able to pay for your dream career like that I applaud you because I cannot do that for very long and I had to quit this job because I was like I can't I can't keep up with myself. And that's also what I mean about like, I just want to be a woman. Like I just want to have time to be a woman and like make sure like my hairs are plucked, make sure like I'm washing my hair, make sure like I'm doing my skincare, make sure I'm doing the things to make me feel good in my body. When you're not taking, when I'm not taking care of myself, like I feel like shit. I am complaining all the time. I'm mean. (laughs) And I, I would rather have less money and be happy than be making a lot of money that I don't have to worry about money but being so miserable and feeling so unhealthy and so unmotivated to live (laughs) to be frank so it's a slippery slope you really need like a happy medium in your life between like how you make money and then like how you are happy but if you have a job that you love and that makes you happy like that, I mean, that's the goal, right? They say like you never, you'll never work a day in your life if you, if you're doing what you love. And that's, that's bullshit. Actually, that's not true because you work a lot harder if you're, if you're pursuing your creative passion or whatever, you know, we as humans, we only have 24 hours in a day. And I always wish that we had longer because I find myself saying like there's not enough hours in a day there's not enough hours in a day because there's so many things that I want to do all the time like my to-do list is always like so long and I just I said multiple times on this podcast but I'm pretty sure I have ADHD because I'm so bad at getting things done I'm so bad at finishing things I'm so bad at, at focusing and I really shouldn't speak so ill of myself like that on the podcast, but it's true. I'm just saying like, if you, if you have trouble struggles with 
productivity. Like I'm right there with you, but I'm trying my best to get better. And the only way that I can get better though, is if I feel good emotionally, mentally, physically. And I, I just can't feel that way if I'm working all the time. So like rest is so important for me. Rest, sleep, eating good, working out, taking care of my skin health. Like it's all encompassing. Like, unfortunately, I can't just like wake up every day and just be a robot who doesn't take care care of themselves and only does things for other people. Because yeah, I would just go insane. When you're young and when, when you're a kid and somebody asks you, what is your dream job? I mean, I think fucking, wasn't it John Let? I was going to say John Legend. Wasn't it John Lennon who said, maybe the question that they asked him was like, what is the secret to life or something? Wasn't that what it is? And John Len- Lennon, oh my God, why am I John Legend? John Lennon. And John Lennon was like, he wrote down to be happy. Like that was his goal in life or like that was the secret to life or whatever. And true. (laughs) I agree. I agree. And then second, oh my God, that makes me think of the movie yesterday. Such a good movie. If you haven't seen it, where was I going with this? Okay. So when you're younger and someone asks you like what your dream job is, what your dream career and, you know, people still ask you that until you're probably like, I don't know when people stop asking people that, like what age they're at when they stop asking. But I, I don't think it's a very good thing to ask a kid if that makes sense. Like, I don't think it, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a good thing to put so much pressure on, or I don't think it's a good question to like constantly be asking a young person because I, I just, I don't dream of labor and I don't think anyone does like, oh, what's your dream job? My dream job is no job. I don't have a dream job. I have a dream life and that's to travel and have new experiences and have uh, create wonderful memories with the person I love the most and be with the people I love the most as much as I possibly can because this life is it's long but it's it's short it's short if you if you think about the average person like just putting in 40 50 60 hours a week into their career and then only living for the weekends or only living for the one week that they get to go on vacation a year like that's just not it's sad it's sad and I wish we all didn't have to do that I wish we all could be nepo babies (laughs) I guess no but not even that like I just I just wish I just want to put on some nice jewelry and some makeup and a and a dress and I want to go in a field and frolic and read a book and drink lemonade and kiss my boyfriend <laughs> and take pictures create art and just be in love but yeah I just I don't dream of labor and I don't think anyone should, (laughs) especially if they're being heavily exploited by the company that they work for. Okay, enough of that, guys. (laughs) Um, Hopefully that didn't end on too low of a note. If you're listening to this at your job, I'm so sorry. I, I really, you got it. You got it. Keep on going. I just, I think I'm just not as strong as most people. I just can't do it. I love the jobs and the clients that I do have that I do on a weekly basis. I just don't think I could ever have like a real nine to five. So sorry to end on such low of a note. But oh, I also wanted to say that every week, hopefully, I'm going to have a bonus episode that is just a recap of Love Island. So I will have no Love Island spoilers in my regular episodes like the love island ones will be clearly titled like love island week one recap so if you are watching two weeks late like a normal sane person and don't have a vpn to be able to be up to date you can just go back to that episode whenever you finish the week one so that nothing gets spoiled for you but um but yeah i just want to do 
weekly little Love Island updates of my thoughts. Really short mini episodes. So hopefully if you're into Love Island too, you'll check them out and we can talk about it because I love Love Island. You guys know it's the it's the highest form of art and I truly, truly believe that. Thanks guys for chilling with me this week and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Nothing much, just a chillin'.